presenter is uh, dr anjali khadia and uh, unluckily uh, this little girl met with an accident she is a consultant pediatric ophthalmology arvindai hospital pondicherry and uh, dr aditi ghosh will be presenting uh, in uh, her lieu a novel technique for capsular excess she met with an accident and she broke her shoulder so aditi all to you yeah yes sir good evening one and all uh, i'll be presenting uh, dr anjali's uh, innovation a novel technique for uh, capsular excess using a dented cystitome and uh, unfortunately she could not join up with us for a, because she had a fracture so you can start sharing the screen ah uh, yes sir is it is it visible is the screen visible for all uh, it's visible you can start playing hello okay sir ankit namaskar ji the authors have no financial interest in this presentation anxiety of a surgeon is well understood when the excess does not follow its normal course ideal capsular excess is central circular and of adequate size that is 5 to 5.5 mm for phaco emulsification surgery a small capsular excess is a recipe for disaster because it makes cortex removal and intraocular lens implantation difficult it also has higher chances of capsular back distension syndrome capsular contraction syndrome and anterior capsular opacification in the post operative period A large capsular excess can cause nucleus herniation into the anterior chamber making phaco emulsification difficult. There is higher chance of exposed optic edge and secondary posterior capsular opacification. Many innovations have been used to make the perfect size of capsular excess like the corneal impression marker, ring calipers, variant guided capsular excess and femtosecond laser assisted capsulotomy. The question arises Is there a simple way to make the perfect excess? Our answer is yes. We can. We introduce our innovation, the dented cystitome. Its preparation requires a curved anatomy scissor, a 26 cord cystitome needle, and Castrovigo scalpel, which are routinely available in ophthalmic surgical setup. For phaco emulsification, set the caliper at required excess radius of 2.5 mm and mark the distance from the tip of the cystitome. Press on the marked distance uniformly using a curved anatomy scissor to make the dent. Provisionally, a second dent can also be made at uniform distance from the first dent. to mark the excess diameter for intraoperative application the corneal reflection of microscope is used as the excess center the excess flap is then raised routinely keeping the dent of cystitome in alignment with the corneal reflection to obtain the adequate excess radius Circular and adequate excess is ensured in all clock hours by repeatedly measuring the excess radius while maintaining alignment of the surgical landmarks which are the central corneal reflection the margins of the excess the tip of the cystitome and the dent on the cystitome Here a continuous curvilinear capsular excess has been completed in uniform manner Excess radius is confirmed by the cystitome using it in all clock hours with the dents used as the scale. A double dented cystitome can also be used to confirm the final adequate diameter of the excess. At the end of the surgery, a 360 degree overlap of optic edge of the intraocular lens is achieved. This novel modification of cystitome was used to perform capsular excess in 47 eyes and in most of them the excess was central and of uniform size. Apart from routine anterior capsular excess, 
It is a good tool for rexis in case of toric intraocular lenses, for posterior capsular rexis in pediatric cases, and for training the new surgeons. The advantages of this novel modification is that it can be easily made by the surgeon or the assistant and provides a real-time guidance for the measurement of the capsular rexis. The measurement is not affected by the corneal magnification and can be modified as per the case requirement. This innovation is simple and easy to use at no additional cost. It is a utilitarian tool in the hands of a beginner. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you.